Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to be going over two new tests for convergence or divergence of series. Um, we're going to start with the direct comparison test and then we'll go ahead and um, go into the limit comparison test next. So let's start with the direct comparison test. As usual, we always start with some initial conditions that need to be met in order to utilize this test. So we are going to let zero be less than a sub n, be less than b sub n. So these are going to be two different rules for series that we're going to be comparing, right? Hence comparison test, right? Um, for all n, now it just has to be after a certain n. And we'll get into that when we look at some examples. So it doesn't have to be on the entire interval. It just has to be for all n after a certain n. Okay. One. If the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of b sub n converges, then the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n also converges. Number two is if the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, now this is of a sub n, diverges, then the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of b sub n also diverges. Let's see why this is the case. So informally, what number one is saying, because a sub n is less than b sub n, okay, you have a convergent series that's actually greater than um, a sub n, right? And so if something converges, and then we have a series that's less than it, well, then that's also going to converge, right? So it kind of logically follows for number one, if the larger series, let me put that in quotes, converges, oops, so does the smaller one. And it's similar logic for number two. If the smaller series diverges, well, then the one that's bigger than it is also going to diverge. So if the smaller series diverges, so does the larger series. Now, this test, you really want to be a little strategic with what you're choosing, um, and you really need to make sure that initial condition is met. So you're going to be given a series with a rule, right? And then you're going to have to pick another series to compare it to um, that meets the conditions. Note, the one that's less than and the one that's greater than is really important when it comes to establishing whether it converges or diverges. So let's look at a couple examples. Let's take a look at number one. So we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over one plus two to the n. Naturally, what we could compare this to is, so we can compare to, Now, this isn't always as obvious, so be careful. This one just happens to work out nicely. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n, which this is actually, if we rewrite it, it's very clearly a geometric series, right? This is just the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 half to the n. And so our r is 1 half, right? 
and the absolute value of r is less than one. So therefore, this converges by the geometric series test, okay? So this converges by the geometric series test. Now we need to make sure before we can state that this other series converges as well, um, that initial condition. We need to say, well, because this series is actually smaller than our series we're comparing it to, it also has to converge. Let's make sure that's true. So if we have zero is less than one over one plus two to the n, which is less, needs to be less than or equal to one over two to the nth power for all n after a certain n. Well, it turns out this is true from one to infinity, right? The denominator in that middle one over one plus two to the n is going to be larger than the denominator of one over two to the nth power, just by one, not by much, but still, this is gonna be a true statement for all n from one to infinity. So check. Therefore, we can state that the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over one plus two to the nth power converges by the direct comparison test. You can also abbreviate this as DCT. Okay, now's a great time just to kind of challenge yourself, pause and do numbers two and three. And then we will go ahead and do them together. Okay, so number two, we have the sum from n equals three to infinity of one over n minus two. So naturally, it's really tempting to compare this to the sum from n equals three to infinity of one over n. This is the harmonic series. So this actually diverges. So harmonic series, you can state this by name. Therefore, it diverges. Now remember, we want this original series to be larger than something that diverges. So we have zero is less than, um, we have one over n in the middle, and is that less than or equal to one over n minus two for all n after a certain n? Well, it actually ends up being true, right? Because if I subtract two, the denominator is going to be smaller in one over n minus two than it is in one over n. So it would be true from two, well, Let's, oh, I guess three, three is where this starts, right? Because two would make that um, undefined. So from three to infinity, this is in fact true. Okay, um, so now that we've established that initial condition, we can say, therefore, the sum from n equals three to infinity of one over n minus two diverges, right? It's larger than something that diverges by the direct comparison test, DCT. Okay, let's take a look at number three. Now this one is a little bit trickier than it looks at first appearance, because at first, at first glance, you really wanna compare this to one over square root of n, but there's a little bit of a problem with that. So one over square root of n is a p-series, and that p-series um, does, diverge, but the problem is this is actually something, um, it's smaller than something that diverges because that n plus one, right, is a bigger denominator. Um, and so it doesn't help us to find something smaller than something that diverges. It doesn't work well. So you're going to have to pick something else. So we want to find um, another p-series that diverges, but that's actually going to be larger, right, than this series. So we're instead, let's go ahead and compare this to our harmonic series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. And this diverges 
because it's the harmonic series. Okay, so when I set up my initial condition, I now have something that's larger um, than something that diverges, right? So we have zero is less than one over n, which is less than or equal to one over square root of n plus one. And so this is for all n from, let's see, is it true from one to infinity? It looks like it. So from one to infinity. We have met our initial condition, so therefore we can say the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over root n plus one diverges by DCT, our direct comparison test. Okay, so now that we've done the direct comparison test, let's go ahead and change gears a little bit. We're gonna talk about the limit comparison test. All right, so limit comparison test. Let's start with just our initial conditions, just like we normally do. So if a sub n is greater than zero and b sub n is greater than zero, so these are, we want positive terms in our sequences. Okay, and the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n equals L, where L is finite and positive, then both the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n and the sum from n equals one to infinity of b sub n converge or both diverge. Okay, so essentially you're doing something really similar where you're going to be comparing this, um, this series to another series. You're gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of the ratio of the two, um, and then you're gonna find L. And so this basically, this, this method really only works well um, and I'd only recommend it when you're comparing messy algebraic series um, to an easier P series. Um, and so you disregard all but the highest powers of N in the numerator and denominator, and it makes taking limits really easy. Um, it's a much easier method than say the integral test or some of the other ones. Um, okay, so let's take a look at an example. We have the sum from n equals one to infinity um, of one over three n squared minus four. So we want to basically state our initial conditions first. And that's that our, our actual rule for our sequence uh, for the terms in the series are po both positive and we need to pick one to compare it to. Well, because it's one over three n squared minus four, it's natural to pick something like one over n squared, right? So we have one over n squared, which is definitely greater than zero, and one over three n squared minus four, which is definitely greater than zero um, for basically all n from one to infinity, right, on our interval. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so, one, oh, actually, you know what? Um, it's actually from two to infinity. Let me catch that real quick because three times one squared is three minus four, that is negative, so it's not actually true. It just has to be true for all n after a certain n, just like um, that kind of the last test that we did. Okay, so now we're comparing it to one over n squared. Right, that's the one we chose.
And we're gonna set up our limit. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity, it doesn't matter which one's on top, which one's on the bottom um, of a sub n, which I'll, I'll do one over n squared over b sub n, which is one over three n squared minus four. Okay, then we can change this to multiplying by the reciprocal. We end up with the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n squared times three n squared minus four over one. Well, that's just the limit as n approaches infinity of one over, or sorry, three n squared minus four over n squared. And this equals three, which is finite and positive. So it means both of these series converge or they both diverge. Well, the reason we want to compare um, 1 over 3n squared minus 4 to 1 over n squared is this is a p series where p is 2, which is greater than 1. And what do we know about p series um, where p is greater than 1? Well, it converges by the p-series test, PST. Um, and if one converges and that limit is finite and positive, we know the other one has to converge as well. So the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over three n squared minus four converges. And this is by the limit comparison test, which we can abbreviate as LCT. Okay, so now is a great time. Go ahead and pause and try to do numbers two and three, and then you can play it and we can do it together. Okay, so number two, we need to figure out what we're gonna compare the sum from n equals one to infinity of root n over n plus seven to. And I think naturally thinking about root n over n, that would simplify to one over root n. Okay, so naturally I think it uh, makes sense to compare it to the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over root n or n to the one half. Um, well, this is a P series where P is a half, which is um, between zero oops, and one. So therefore, this actually diverges by the p-series test. And then we do need to satisfy our initial condition. So 1 over root n is greater than 0, and square root of n over n plus 7 is greater than 0, and that's for all n. Let's make sure we get that interval correct uh, from 1 to infinity. It looks like it's going to work. Yep. And we're good. Okay, so now what we need to do is take our limit. So the limit as um, n approaches infinity of one over root n over root n over n plus seven. We can rewrite this by multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, we end up with the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus seven over root n times root n, that's n to the one half times n to the one half. We add those exponents, we just get n. Um, and this actually just equals one, which is positive and finite. Um, so we are good. Actually, I'm even going to write that. I think even on the other one, it's a good idea to write. It's greater than zero, right? Because um, it's positive is one of the initial conditions. Um, so therefore, they are both going to diverge. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of root n over n plus 7, whoops, diverges by the limit comparison test, LCT. Okay. All right, so we have our very last one here. We are going to find the sum from n equals one to infinity 
of n over 4n cubed plus n squared plus 5. And remember, the very first thing that we would like to do is figure out what we are going to compare it to. Um, and so for this one, because it's n over 4n cubed is kind of like the leading terms, um, I think it's pretty natural to compare this to um, probably the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, right? Um, and this one is a p series. So this is p equals 2, which is greater than 1. Therefore, this actually converges by the p-series test. All right, let's meet our initial conditions. So 1 over n squared is greater than 0, and n over 4n cubed plus n squared plus 5 um, is greater than 0. Let's see, for all n, and it looks like it works from 1 to infinity. OK, so after that, we need to take our limit. OK, we do 1 over n squared over n over 4n cubed plus n squared plus 5. We can multiply by the reciprocal. We end up with the limit as n approaches infinity of 4n cubed plus n squared plus 5 over n squared times n is n cubed. This limit equals 4, which is positive and finite. Um, and so therefore, they're both going to converge. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n over 4n cubed plus n squared plus 5 converges. And this is by the limit comparison test, LCT. OK, um, and so those were two additional tests that we're going to be adding on to now our very long laundry list. Um, I believe we only have, I think, one more test to add. Um, which is the ratio test. Um, so just, just one more, but it is a lot for you guys to remember. So now's a really good time to start um, listing out all of those tests that you've learned over the course of the past eight lessons now um, and really making sure that we're practicing utilizing any and all of the different tests to figure out convergence or divergence of these series. All right, that is all for today. Thank you.